بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از سلیبس 5090 بایولوجی جون 2021 اینڈ دس از دا پیپر 62 which is another alternative to practical and uh, we're doing the latest paper so that you can get some help with the upcoming exam in November as you can see this exam is for one hour and this was the June 2021 exam which was not held in Pakistan and uh, we're going to discuss this practical so one hour is the time and the marks is uh, 40 marks so you have 40 marks and you have one hour to get uh, as many marks as possible Uh, question 1 as we read through it some students investigated the growth of some seedlings uh, yes all the uh, questions have to be answered so there's no choice in this paper so there was a petri dish there's a moist filter paper there's seeds on it and uh, with the start of the experiment and then after several days you can see they have grown and they're a little taller some have grown some have not grown uh, some have totally not germinated like this one here and this one here they have not germinated some have this one is not germinated this one is not germinated so do look at the diagram very carefully then uh, they had three dishes of seedlings a b and c that had been growing in the same conditions for different amounts of time they selected three seedlings from each dish and measured their heights to the nearest millimeter the result of dishes a and c are shown in the table So A and C was easy. There was 21, 23, 25. So you calculated the average was 23. Here it was 2, 4, 3, 3. And the average was 3. So this was the nearest millimeter that we did calculate it. Then of course the B part was left out. And the three seedlings from dish B are shown below. Measure them and record their heights. And they roughly they've given you a number of figures in it. So I've taken some 7, 9 and 5. and of course there was a little bit they were allowed little a uh, few millimeter up and down it was allowed in the first one you could have said uh, 7 to 9 um, i'm just writing that down just to make you also it was allowed 7 to 9 and this it was allowed 9 to 11 and then this was allowed about from anything from 5 to 7 so i have taken just one of those and i found the mean to be 7 then calculate the mean height of the three seedlings from each dish to the nearest millimeter and complete the table and that's just what i've done for you then it says use the data to suggest which seedlings had been growing to the longest period of time and give a reason for your answer why because a was the tallest it was 23 mean height and uh, that is why we think it's been growing for the longest time and that is why that was the only clue that you could get was that one of them was taller than the others and that means that had been growing for the longest time so that was a bit of a uh, knowledge of biology which helped you to understand that they would grow taller as time went along then in the part 4 it says suggest two reasons why a number of seeds rather than just one seed were placed in each petri dish at the beginning of the investigation Yeah, well, of course, it comes very naturally to you if you know the answer to it. Some seeds might not germinate, just as I mentioned at the beginning. Then to uh, to identify anomalies, if we only had one seed and that didn't grow, so you would think, oh my God, so that means this is the condition which is not very uh, helpful in germination. So some seeds might not germinate. Then to identify the anomalies and more reliable and calculate the mean. I keep on saying this: you repeat experiments to make the results more reliable. and so that you can calculate the mean and remove the anomalies then part 5 of the question it says the student selected three seedlings from each dish to measure suggest a method the students could have used for choosing the three seedling and state an advantage of this method now there were a number of things which you could have written and three different possibilities because you have to give me the method and then the advantage so the first method which i have talked about is uh, they were straight the ones which were straight why because it's easy to measure the ones which are slightly crooked well you can't measure them very correctly then of course the second point was that the tallest and the shortest so that you could cover the whole range and then of course the last one was of course that chosen at a random and then of course this was uh, this rules out bias and i was telling you in a previous paper this rules out favoritism bias means favoritism that okay when well, you favored only the ones which were the tallest or you favors the one which was the smallest which are easy to measure or something like that so rules out bias this is some english that you need to learn 
to write this in the exam rules out favoritism or rules out bias but if alternative words is not allowed then you have to use the word rules out bias uh, then the B part of the question in another investigation some students calculated the mean heights of some seedlings as they grew they recorded their results so grown for six days eight millimeter 10 days 23 millimeter 12 days 27 15 32 20 36 and then the last one was 23 and 37 so all these we carry them on to the next page and of course here on the next page then we have to plot a graph of these. So I just wrote them down from that page. So on the grid constructed a line graph to show the relationship between time and mean height. Now time was all in days as you remember from, let's look at the back page. It says grown for 23 days, time was days, right? And then we come back here and say, so then I've written mean height in millimeter on the Y axis and time in days will be on the X axis because that will be the independent variable. And then I plotted the graph and as you can see in the time, the days were from anything from 6 to 23. So 6 to 23 days. You always write the smallest figure and the largest figure. So then you know that. And the millimeters, the height was anything from 8 to 37. So now you realize that this would be 40 and this would be 25. So that's what exactly what I've done is I've got 25 on the X axis and I've got 40 on the Y axis. And then I plotted it. So six was, six was eight. So here is six and here was eight. I plotted it here. It's difficult to put a dot on it. And then, of course, I plotted the rest. 10 was 23. 12 was 27. 5 was 30, 15 was 32. 20 was 36. And 23 was 37. Now, on the grid, construct a line graph to show the relationship between time and mean height. Now, how was I going to give you the four marks for this? Now, the four marks for this were very easy to get because all you had to do was label the axis. Time on x-axis and both axes fully labeled, mean height in millimeter, you got one mark, even if you didn't draw the graph. Linear scale with two values at origin. So two values at origin, you see here, I've given you the two zeros here. I've started from zero here, and this is also zero here, so origin. And plots use at least half the grid on each axis. Well, I always tell you to sort of spread them out, and you look at the smallest and the largest figure, and the largest figure should come right at the top like we had 37, so I said, okay, we'll have 40 here, right? Then all six plots, uh, all six points correctly plotted. That would get you your third mark. And then the points joined with a ruler or with just a curve through it. So I might not get it very correct. And then I would just join it. Sorry, this one is slightly wrong. And then I would join this, and then I would join this. Please do not extend it. That's called extrapolation. So no extrapolation. That is very important that you know what is extrapolation. I think you might be studying it some other uh, subject as well. Extrapolation means that you would you don't you don't sort of extend it to zero. No, that would be wrong. Or you extend it from here. That would be wrong as well. So extrapolation means that you don't extend it from except you just join the points that were given to you on the uh, graph and that is all. So you plotted this and you should get your four out of four and that's very sad if anybody misses these four out of four in the graph because that's a very easy four marks. Then it says use a graph to describe the growth of these seedlings. Well, yes, growth increases with time faster in the beginning and then of course slower at the end and that was the two marks. Then use the graph to state the time period during which the rate of the growth of the ceiling was greatest between six and 10 days. That's when you can see the sharp increase. You can see the gradient. Use the data and your graph to calculate the rate of growth. The rate of growth is always something over time. So rate of the grade for the five days from 15. So four millimeter in five days. And why, why four millimeter? Because if you remember here from the graph, 15 was day 15, 
if you look at day 15 yeah day 15 was 32 so it was 32 here and day 20 was what was day 20 day 20 was 36 so day 20 was 36 here so 32 and 36 so that means 4 in 5 days so that is what you had to calculate. So four in five days. So that means 0.8 per day, unit time. Then state two variables that need to be controlled while growing these seedlings and explain why they need to be controlled. Why would they need to be controlled? Yes, because you're changing, you're noting the time, the growth per unit time. So you'd have to keep the temperature the same, the light, water, the same seed, the number of seedlings the same. And the explanation was to ensure that only time is the only variable that you have changed. The rest of it all is very constant. You haven't, if you give it less light or if you give it more light, well then that would also affect it. If you take five seedlings instead of 10, if you keep one at 20 degrees Celsius and the other at 40 degrees Celsius, well, of course, then you're, you're varying the other variables. And you said you're going to study the effect of time on the growth of the seedlings. So you can't be changing two parameters at one time. This is something which you need to understand and be very clear in scientific uh, experiments. Then, uh, of course, we come to the C part, which is a planning question, which is slightly difficult. The seeds needed water to germinate and for the seedlings to grow. During a design and investigation, determine the effect of the pH of water on the growth, mean height of seedlings, introduce seedlings grown in petri dishes in a laboratory. So several petri dishes, at least five seeds in each dish, water of different pH used, and then you mentioned the pH three, five, seven, nine, eleven, seven is neutral, then less than that is acidic, above that is alkaline, control temperature and the light and the type of seed and the volume of water. That was all one mark. That's all one mark. That doesn't give you many marks. It's all the same thing. Control the other variables. Then you kept them for the same length of time. Then you measured the height of the seedlings and the sample of three seedlings from each dish, and then you calculated the mean. So this is an investigation, how you plan an investigation. Again, you have to think because you have to get your clue from the first part of the question. So take several Petri dishes, at least five seeds in each, change the pH, then leave them for a fixed amount of time, maybe one day or two day or three day, or however you might leave it, and then see how they have so same here, the length of the time would be the same. So if you left them for 10 days, well, all of them would be left for 10 days. And then you would measure what? You would measure the height of the seedlings. And then you would at least take three because you wanted an average. So three seedlings from each dish of each pH. And then you calculated the mean. So this is something, this is a very important planning and designing experiment. And this is something which you all need to be very clear about how you handle this uh, part of the question. Not very difficult, but you get a little bit of clue in the beginning, in the first part of the question, usually. Uh, then coming to question number two, the photograph shows the surface of a mammalian organ. And we have A and B and C. Uh, identify this organ, heart. Name the structures labeled A, blood vessel. Well, I mean, what else was allowed? Artery was allowed, vein was allowed, but capillary was a reject and names were also a reject, uh, were ignored. So we didn't, we only gave you a mark if you said an artery or a vein or if you said a blood vessel, which was the easiest to pick up. Then in the space below, make a large drawing of this organ as it appears in the photograph. Now, this is, of course, some of you find it very difficult. I find it very easy. I just feel as you need to trace it out and that's it. And this was, of course, the highest marks that you get is five marks so it's a lot of marks and you have to get it right you have to stop saying that you're not good at drawing and all that so i mean what were the five marks for number one clean and clear outline of the heart drawn with a sharp pencil and no shading then heart at least 70 millimeter wide then height greater than width and tapering on both sides to curve the base then surface blood vessel A from top right to bottom left of the drawing. And then the left atrium completely delimited and right atrium higher than the left. 
So these are the things you had to look into, and these were the five mark scheme points for a five marks, which everybody should have got. Not a very, I don't think it's a very difficult. As I said, you just need to trace it out. So you could have put a tracing like you put a tracing paper on it and just trace it out. In the C1, uh, on the photograph, draw a line between B and C, measure and record its length. Well, we've just done that. I did it. Uh, yeah, you can see 40 on the photograph. This is the photograph. So you had to do that. And that was 40 millimeters plus minus one allowed. Then on your drawing, the drawing that you made, you draw a line and B to C measure and record the length. I'm not sure if it's correct, but it's round about maybe 80. I don't have a ruler at the moment. And then you just have to divide the 80 by 40 and then there's got a figure of two. And so the magnification is two times. So this is, there was no difficulty in this paper. It was very simple, straightforward. Uh, paper which does not require much of, but you have to be very clear when you do this magnification part. Now you can look at the grade boundary for this paper. It was uh, paper 6-2 as a total 40 marks and you got a 27 so you could have made a mistake of 13 marks and you got an A. 23, if you got 23 out of 40, you got a B, 19 out of 40 C, 16 out of uh, 40 D and 14 out of 40 E which is just a pass. So these were the grade boundaries. I want you to be very aware of this, how many marks you can lose and how to get your, to be 100% that you get the A that you want or the B if you want or the C if you want this. I don't know what you, what do you, what do you aspire for and what grade do you want to get? So that finishes another uh, ATP paper and that should be hopefully helpful to you in understanding further more ATP exams and doing the paper more readily. And thank you once again.